Alright, so I was not planning on making a video today, but there's been a lot of uh, hubbub and kind of drama on Twitter and Nintendo uh, sectors of the internet that Zelda Tears of the Kingdom may be the final major Switch game. Now, I don't really know what that means per se, but there's a couple of re reliable people in the industry that have been talking about this, which has spurred the discussion online, and I thought it'd be fun to weigh in and just kind of talk to it and read through their tweets. So, um, this all stemmed from... Uh, what I mentioned in my my Switch Pro video from the end of last year, uh, talking about what Digital Foundry said, saying that at some point he had heard the Switch Pro was in active development, but then eventually, because of COVID, they actually canceled it. At that point, Andy Robinson from uh, Video Games Chronicle said, and quote, he, they quote tweeted the tweet, he said, uh, from what I'm hearing, I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo starts talking about new hardware by 2024. I'm not convinced another huge first party game other than Zelda is left on Switch. Usual Nintendo prediction caveats apply. I actually trust uh, Andy Robinson a good bit. I think Video Games Chronicle does a great reporting. Um, but you know, and I like that he just says, you know, usual Nintendo prediction caveat supply. He's basically leaving it open. At this point, a tweet from back in November from another uh, industry person kind of got brought up um, from Christopher Dring of GameIndustry.biz. Basically, they tweeted out something about, uh, well, I can just read it here. I completely get the editor approach to developing Pokemon. I'm not even opposed to it. I just feel they could have moved Legends of this Christmas gift time. And they're talking about Scarlet and Violet's condition because that was when that game came out. Uh, then he said, there will be a good reason why they didn't. But if what I hear is true about Nintendo's post out lineup, there isn't one. Those games can play a key role next year. Uh, a Twitter user replied, wait, what? You mean all next games are are in development for the next-gen hardware. Um, and then Christopher Drink said, no, I didn't mean literally nothing, but I have heard that after Zelda, Nintendo doesn't have a significant game for quite some time. Now, I've never seen this person's Twitter account, Christopher Drink, uh, the head of GameIndustry.biz, so obviously a pretty big website, right? Um, I have no idea if what they've what he's reported in the past has been accurate or what obviously he's kind of just you know shooting from the hip on twitter replying to someone else that replied to his tweet saying what he's heard and that's completely fine if he's heard that then that's that's what he's heard um from whatever his sources may be what do people quantify as a major nintendo title because we already know of two after zelda Min minimum two arguably three actually arguably three now that i think about it so of course we have pikmin 4 which is slated for a 2023 release. We have Metroid Prime 4, which will either come out this year or next. I assume it has to, it has to come out within the next 12 months or next 24 months, I would assume, right? Um, and then, of course, we have that, that third thing that I kind of just realized. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 3 will almost certainly get a standalone DLC that will have a physical release and be its own game, kind of like Torna was for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Obviously, that's more niche than the other two things. And yes, I know what you're going to say. All three of those things I just said are already niche, in terms of like Nintendo fandom, that's like the, that's that's it. That's what we all want. We've been begging for Pikmin Four for ten years, actually, a actually ten years. Pikmin Three is ten years old this year. From the Wii U, came out in July of 2013, I think, um, or August, I think, in America. Metroid Prime Four is one of the most hyped games of the Switch generation for Nintendo fans, and Xenoblade is Xenoblade, which always does, you know, a million. Um, and even Pikmin, real quick, um, people say like, oh, Pikmin is a nothing franchise. I'm not a huge Pikmin fan, but to say it's a nothing franchise is a little dismissive. It's equivalent to Metroid, maybe a little bit less than Metroid. And yes, Metroid is notoriously not a real seller. Uh, Metroid Dread is the best-selling game in the series, sold over 3 million copies. It's That's Fire Emblem tier, that's Xenoblade tier, and those are both franchises that people seem to think are like thriving and everything. So I don't think Metroid Dread doing 3 million is certainly anything but a positive, right? I think the issue here, and maybe... I don't know who this person's sources are, whatever it is. I think the issue here, though, is because the Switch is life cycle is, is clearly going to last longer than people want people wanted to. I'm fine with it lasting a couple more years, which is what it's going to last. Um, we're kind of in unexpected territory. This is going to be Nintendo's most successful console of all time. It just outsold a PS4 and Game Boy. The only thing beating it right now are like PS2 and... Yes, I think. I think there's, that's it. There's a good chance that this is going to be their best-selling device ever. Whether or not you believe another Switch is coming out within the next year, that's it's kind of irrelevant because even with the 3DS, which was a successful handheld, they kept supporting it for a couple years after. Now, that was mostly ports, 
but the 3DS also wasn't as successful as the Switch is. If we are strictly talking system sellers though, like, or not even system sellers, just, you know, 10 million plus games, games that will sell 10 million plus units. The Switch has dozens of those, or a couple dozen maybe. Um, there, there's a lot of those first party Nintendo games that'll push a million sales. The top 10 sales, I think it's like 15 million above now because there are so many of those. You know, Legends Arceus sold 14 million and it's not even in the top 10. So, if we're strictly talking games that move units, there's almost certainly going to be another game after Zelda that does that. I think a game like Rank Fit 2 would certainly probably do that. I think a game like a 2D Mario, which feels all but guaranteed, would almost certainly do that. And I think if we get down to that 5 million range, I think a new game from uh, Good Feel could do that. We haven't had anything from them since Yoshi's Crafted World. I think a new, a new Donkey Kong game could do 3 million. And it's more like 3 to 5 million range here. But basically, my point is, what the hell does major game even mean i think the issue is we're so preconditioned as this kind of going back to my point earlier that we're so preconditioned to nintendo's life cycles lasting a short amount of time this time with the switch we've already had every franchise have their turn nintendo fans and the way nintendo operates each console we get our game in that franchise and then we move on to the next console because that's just how nintendo's operated with the 3ds we get a mario kart smash bros wii u mario kart smash bros next console and this is how it's been for the past 25 years right this time with the Switch, we've gotten two games in every franchise. We have two Fire Emblem games. We have two Xenoblades. We are going to have two 3D Zeldas. We have two Fire Emblem Warriors games. We have two... Uh, we're going to have two Pikmin games if you count three Deluxe. So, we're kind of in unprecedented territory for right, uh, with, right now with Nintendo. And this is going to be the most successful console. Obviously, they're steering the ship very carefully because they don't want to mess this up. And that transition to next generation with the Switch 2 is obviously a very delicate procedure because they don't want to mess it up. They just had the Wii U and the 3DS, which, although a success, was obviously much more modest than the DS. There is no chance that there is not at least, I would say, two or three more games coming out after Zelda that will sell 10 million copies. Now, a key factor that people aren't even talking about when discussing this is Pokemon. That right there, I think, is at least two more games on the Switch. I think there is no way we don't get at least two more mainline Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch. And this is where it gets to a bit of an even more interesting topic, in my opinion, is the Switch 2 being backwards compatible, uh, assuming it is, I think we can all kind of hope and predict that it will be. If the Switch 2 is backwards compatible, Nintendo is going to have little incentive to make exclusive software for it for a while. We see that right now with PS5 and PS4 and even like Xbox Series and, and, and One and, and Series X and all that, where God of War, Ragnarok, and Horizon, and, and these games are, are coming out on both consoles because... The install base is huge. We are in a different time. It's not like it was in the early 2000s where you just cut it on, you know, flat and then you move on. I know I'm rambling a lot, but okay, so this is like the scenario, right? And people's heads from what I've seen on family boards and recent era and just Twitter in general. A lot of people, and this is not sarcasm, this is not a joke. People actually believe this, and I feel sorry for these people. A lot of people think the Switch 2, not the Switch Pro, the Switch 2, the successor to the Nintendo Switch, is going to be announced and released alongside Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I'm not even going to get into that because that's just idiotic, but let's just play with that theory, right? You're telling me you think everything after that will not come out on Switch 1? You're telling me you think Pokemon, the next Pokemon game that releases in holiday of 2024, let's just say, assuming there's not one this year, will not release on the Switch? Even if you think the Switch 2 is coming out in early 2024, you genuinely are going to sit here and tell me that you think pokemon black and white remix or whatever it is that releases next holiday or holiday 2024 is going to be exclusive to switch 2 folks no matter what the switch is here to stay for minimum minimum two years from where we are right now in january of 2023 minimum i'm not saying it's impossible for the switch 2 to release in 2024 i think i think it could happen i think early 2024 could theoretically happen we don't know anything beyond 2023 in terms of lineup assuming metroid prime 4 comes out this year and pikmin 4 and you know that xenoblade game and maybe that 2d mario and a couple other things we don't know anything beyond that so the slate is certainly empty but also we're talking about this before nintendo direct that this this could all change in an instant like a snap of the finger you know um I think another key element that I keep bringing up is that Splatoon 3 is going to have DLC through the end of 2024. They're not going to keep supporting a game for the Switch 1 and not release other games around it and just move on to the next console. Basically, the subject comes down to whether or not you think the Switch 2 is coming out anytime soon. And the reality of it is the Switch 2 is not coming out within the next two years, most likely. Obviously, at some point, Nintendo needs to 
steer the ship and and transition to the next console and you can't just do that as soon as you know sales for the switch one cut off and we saw this holiday they did dip a little bit although i think that might mostly be due to ps5 being available um because we're seeing stronger software sales than ever nintendo broke two huge huge milestones in 2022 with splatoon 3 and pokemon scarlet and violet they're not just gonna let this thing die they're not gonna cut software off like that you can think the Switch 2 is going to come out in 2024. That's fine. I think that's en entirely wrong. Like, there's no way that's going to happen, in my opinion. But they're not just going to have no more games for the Switch 1. There will be another Pokemon game, at least one, probably two. And I'm not, I'm not just talking the two versions. I'm talking, like, actual new pairs of releases on the Switch. I think at least two of those. Maybe even three. I think there's a good chance we get that Donkey Kong game that's rumored. Metroid Prime 4 is obviously confirmed that that will be coming to switch Pikmin 4 and these are all things that are going to happen after Zelda so this entire concept going back to the, the the base subject of this video I know I rambled a lot of whether or not there will be more major games for the switch after Zelda of course there will be what <laughs> what the fact that people are even humoring this idea is ridiculous to me there is no doubt that Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is probably the biggest game for the next three or four years for Nintendo. Unless they happen to, unless the Switch 2 releases and Mario Kart comes out, right? But that's just because it's going to sell 15 to 20 million copies. Well, actually, no, sorry, correction. The next Pokemon game will sell better than this. I know Breath of the Wild has like 25 million sales, but that's obviously Breath of the Wild. I don't, we'll see how Tears of the Kingdom does. I don't think it's going to do that well. I think I'd be shocked if it sells that well, but I don't know. This just the fact that people are even, you know, talking about this is, is kind of comical to me because First of all, we literally have games announced that are big after Zelda, and we haven't had a direct. Nintendo holds their cards close to their chest. Now, if we get to this January, February direct, or even E3 direct this year, and it's looking pretty barren, then maybe it's time to start thinking, oh, I think that's when we can start talking about the next console. But right now, we know plenty. We have Advance Wars. We have Zelda. We have that Kirby port. We have the Bayonetta game. We have... Zelda, obviously. We have Pikmin 4. We have Metroid Prime. We have Xenoblade, which could just be a DLC, but I'm assuming it'll be like Torna and have a physical release standalone kind of thing, right? This year is already pretty good, guys. Plus the Splatoon DLC, plus Mario Kart DLC, Fire Emblem Engage, I didn't even mention. I don't I just don't get where this consensus that the Switch has no software is coming from. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to just blindly defend Nintendo. I don't want to come off as a Nintendo fanboy. But um these people are kind of stupid. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe for more Nintendo content. Bye-bye!